If a group of evil men trapped you in your workplace and began hunting you to exact bloody revenge, what would you do? These bad guys made the stupid decision to come to our place of business and kill us. But we're not giving them that satisfaction. We're getting our sh together and doing the exact job we were paid to do. We're taking out the trash. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the human trash in Hunt Her, Kill Her. Work is often a thing you do because you have to, an inconvenience between you and the rest of your life. That is especially true for Karen, a single mom fresh from a divorce with an abusive husband, Danny. She's also late on rent, has to rely on the backhanded kindness of assholes to get by, and will take any job she can get, even if there's assholes there too. These two know her abusive ex and corner her at work on her first day as a factory night janitor. They accuse her of being a shrew because she won't let her ex see their kid and literally rub it in her face that they think she deserves to die. Look, loyalty is cool, or whatever, but if you're the type of guy who leaps to harassing a woman on your friend's behalf, I'm gonna guess you have that in common with your friend, and her kids are better off without him. Another co-worker gives Kara the grand tour of the massive facility she's meant to clean and restock overnight. He also shows her a faulty outdoor lock, while telling her there there was a very recent break-in at another factory down the road. I mean, you've shown me this entire place, and I still have no idea what you make here. But it looks like there's an awful lot of parts and handy people around to fix that exit. You know, considering the crime that just happened next door. But aside from that problem for future me, this job seems pretty chill, all things considered. Crank some tunes, fall into a rhythm. I bet you could finish this place off in like four hours, then spend the rest taking whatever online courses you need to get a better job. Pretty early into her shift, she receives a visitor. Through the closed door, the guy tells her he needs a signature for a package, and she makes her first mistake. She opens the door. A guy with a facial scar tosses out several random names, asking if they're there. Before asking if she's alone, she makes her second mistake, answering him honestly. And suddenly, he doesn't need that signature anymore. I think we all remember the strange in which a spooky girl comes to the door asking if someone's there before killers break in. That is this guy. He's fishing, casing the joint, and she walked right into it. It's not her job to answer the door in the first place. If you do ask through the door and they say they need a signature, tell them to come back during business hours. And if a stranger ever asks you if you're alone, you lie. But also, it's pretty stupid to send a gang member with a super recognizable tattoo on his face to case the joint in the first place. Place. Some people have good intuition. All it takes is her calling the non-emergency number right after he leaves and mentioning a sketchy dude with a very obvious circular facial scar. The cops won't do anything about it now, but they will later after there's been a very public incident here. Nerds, it's time to put a ring on your own finger with the ridge. If you're getting married, constantly losing your ring when you take it off to shoot or golf or just need to elevate your finger game. It's time to check out the Ridge's impossibly sexy silicon and metal rings. They're beveled for your pleasure with an inner convex shape designed for on-hand comfort in any situation. Whether you're going fishing or destroying your brother-in-law in hand-to-hand -hand combat, they come in a variety of colors and tough wear premium materials including carbon fiber, tungsten carbide, 24 karat gold, and titanium. Check out the drip on that alpine name Navy 8mm silicon ring set, and each ring comes with a dual band silicone ring, the latest in no pinch technology. The Ridge knows life happens fast. Each purchase comes with the option of two future exchanges for the same ring and the same or different size, just in case you wake up with a six pack or lose your ring boss fighting. Honestly, you're never taking this bad boy off, and the Ridge is so confident about that, they'll let you test it out for 99 days and give you a refund within that time if you're not completely satisfied. Click my link, ridge.com slash nerdexplains, and use the code nerdexplains to get 10% off today. Your hand deserves it. Besides, over 3 million happy customers can't
can't be all wrong, can they? The Ridge's beveled ring and ring set is the better way to own rings. It's just that simple. A few minutes later, she hears noises and walks through the darkened facility, flipping on lights and chasing someone who's always one room ahead of her. Yeah, until they wait to ambush you. Your supervisor said you'd be alone. Call 911. Do not follow the person. What's the plan if you actually catch him? Also, remember what I said in my Malum video. You don't pay your employer's electricity bill. Turn on every light in the place. When she doesn't catch him, she re-enters the main factory room, where she proceeds to open the package the delivery guy left addressed to the factory. Why, exactly? Oh, right. So this can happen. Oh, sh box contains a brick she used earlier to prop an external door open. The moment she realizes what it is, an intruder whistles for her attention, and she turns to find several masked men standing at the room's doors. So, you packed a brick into a box and delivered it to a janitor. Well, you're either here for her, or we're dealing with an animated supervillain. Maybe both. When they chase her, instead of heading straight for any valuables this place might have, they all but confirm they're here for Karen specifically. Of course, she doesn't even take the scissors already in her hand with her when she runs. The four men chase her through a storage room, swiping and slicing with knives, but she's just fast enough to dip behind a roll down door and wedge a chisel into the mechanism. It buys her just enough time to break for the exit, which is chain shut. She runs into the next room and rolls a cart away, jumping into a barrel to hide as they chase the sounds made by the cart, which is great. Excellent use of diversion and misdirection. After they walk away, however, she leaves the barrel without knowing where they are, running blindly through the facility, staying a step ahead, but never truly making ground. And then one spots her. He chases her back through the storage room to the roll-down door. She's not fast enough crawling under. <laughs> He slashes her leg and she impales him with your standard issue cleaning lady screwdriver. Luckily, her injury is just a flesh wound, the kind of movie cut that doesn't even bleed. But it wastes just enough time that she isn't gone before the guys come hunting. Unfortunately, she lost her cell phone in the scuffle too, and they destroy it, along with the landlines. She also lost her brain somewhere because when an intruder approaches her location, she leaves her only immediate weapon behind, which is only something you want to do if you found a better weapon that you can smash over their head when they go for the screwdriver. Instead, she chooses to dangle off a 20-foot drop, where he steps onto her foot and never bothers to look down. Yeah, looks super painful, but also stupid. Not only are you hanging out for everyone on the ground floor to see, but you'll be too exhausted to pull yourself back up when he leaves, which is exactly what happens. She dangles in pain until she can't anymore, then drops, making a massive sound that draws a guy right to her location. She avoids detection simply because none of these bozos look down. Ideally, in a scenario like this, our initial goal is to lose them, as in give them so many search options that they have zero idea of where we actually went. Obviously, to do that, we need to stay out of their line of sight long enough for our trail to go cold. Even better if we can leave the room they're searching so they're forced to expand their search area to the entire facility. That means they'll have to spread out, decreasing the risk we encounter them as a group. Losing them shouldn't be too hard if we know the layout of the building, and use the literal treasure trove of resources everywhere around us. Then we need to look for an open window, or bolt cutters we can use on the door chains, and we're out of here. At the very least, consider climbing the high shelves in one of these storage rooms and laying flat on top, among the boxes, where they're never gonna look unless you make movement. Instead, she sneaks between rooms for a while until the intruder turn on all the lights, which she sneaks over and cuts off completely. Turning off the lights isn't the worst strategy if you know this place as well as that blind guy knew his house and don't breathe, but we don't because we've been working here all of an hour. She returns to one of the chained exits and tries to wedge herself through. <laughs> But it doesn't work, until she smears a little grease on part of her forehead that isn't even touching the door. Suddenly, she's able to squeeze through. It's a miracle, but also way too risky, since you're essentially trying to outrun Ghostface like Tatum through the doggy door. Way too easy to grab you when you're defenseless and easily stabbable. She gets halfway through before she starts trying to wedge her hips through. The hard, wide way, and one of the intruders grabs her. <laughs> 
Congratulations, you'd be holier than Swiss cheese right now if he didn't want you alive. He pulls her back in and attempts to tie her feet, but she grabs a pipe within reach and whacks him, then crawls into a weird empty space just big enough for her in the shelves. It's an awkward squeeze, and the rope around her ankle gets caught on the wood. But, because these are pallet shelves, and the bad guy's intelligence is scene-dependent, the intruder tracks her from above and starts stabbing. <laughs> she gets away, mostly because he isn't really trying all that hard. But when she gets a break, she doesn't even think to remove the rope tied awkwardly around her ankle. So when he comes around again, <laughs> He just reels her in like a stupid, terrible fish. And even then, he doesn't do that well. He gives her more than enough time to magically untie the rope. And it is magical. Seriously, it was never tied in the first place. It was a loop around her ankle. Meaning, without a knife to cut it off, it's just gonna get tighter. Not looser the harder he reels her in. Anyway, the rope comes off. The guy falls back, down the stairs, and slams his neck and head into the concrete. Karen hops down to check if he's dead then pulls him out of view to loot his corpse. She finds a phone, but it's busted. She also discovers she's seen him before. It's the guy who harassed her in the bathroom over her messy divorce with her ex. She notices a forklift nearby, and a hilarious idea forms in her head. She's gonna take this 200 plus pound man, heave him up three feet into the driver's seat by herself, and wedge the gas pedal down so they can chase him for a bit. Aside from, you know, the logic of physically doing that, Sounds great. Glad you're making time for fun between try not to die. It works like a charm. As she scoots him off into the dark, then climbs to an upper storage level, she watches the three remaining men stop the forklift. Turns out, she also had time to tie a note to him, which reads, take him and leave. Unfortunately, her magical flesh wound starts bleeding just in time to alert them to her location, and they converge on the platform, forcing her to hide in the one place they'll never find her, below knee height, because they never look down. She scrambles to the edge, ignoring a very easily scalable bit of scaffolding to either side in favor of letting herself hang and dropping. And of course, despite the grate having no openings in that direction, her belt loop gets caught. An intruder spots her, forcing her to cut and drop on the fly, and she loses her weapon again. Even though all three idiots can see her, only one gives chase, but loses her jogging pretty deep leisurely for a murderer. He searches a series of human-sized crates, but misses her. This time, because he doesn't look up. Guys, I think those masks are just holding you back. What are you even wearing masks for anyway? You're not trying to just talk to her. You're here to kill her, and there's no one else here. Karen sneaks into a random, unlocked room where she finds bolt cutters. See, I told you this place would have some. She runs for the door, but either there's a gap adjustment or lubrication issue, or she is isn't actually strong enough to use them. A little odd, since she's gripping the far ends of the handles, which allows for better leverage and stronger cutting force. Whatever the problem, there's two options here. First, with the chain in the mouth of the bolt cutters, wedge the handles as tightly between the door and jam as you can, pushing the chain outward. With added pressure from the door and jam, it should give you the needed support to force the handles towards each other, through the chain. The second option is to press one handle to the ground, then push down on the other handle with both hands, using the ground for additional leverage. Either way, make sure the chain is in the cutters as deep as it'll go, where the cutting force is the greatest. She doesn't get the chance to do that before the exterior lookout catches her and takes the bolt cutters away, calling out her location to his friends. She runs from another intruder and makes it to a bathroom with a deadbolt, but can't get it locked before he starts forcing the door open. Technically, since he keeps pulling back to slam forward, each drawback is a chance to lock that deadbolt. But when anyone's shoving on a door like this, your goal is to keep that opening as small as possible until they tire enough that you can get the door locked. This bathroom is pretty small. Karen even lays down and wedges her body between the far wall and the door to keep it closed, which means you should be able to do that while standing. Place one foot against the wall behind you and press forward with your hands. It's gonna hurt your back, waiting for him to stop kicking, but it'll mean you're already in position to lock the door when he stops. Karen isn't in position. He grabs grabs her foot through the opening, she whacks him with a plunger, which means by the time she gets to her feet, he's attacking again and she can't lock it. He tries to yank the plunger out of her hand and it snaps off in the doorway, giving her an excellent makeshift stake, especially when he just walks right into it. <laughs>
Those masks, I'm telling you, they are a liability, bro. She gets him against the wall and keeps shoving on the stake, but the plunger's up against the breastbone. He's got plenty of time to take out his knife and slice her stomach. She leans on the plunger again and takes him to the floor, pressing again and again until it finally penetrates the bone. Solid follow through, but also, there's a heavy toilet lid right there if you need to double tap. And for God's sake, grab his knife and get up and lock the god door. Oh, but it's not done. He's still alive, but instead of just grabbing his knife and cutting his artery, she goes with the waterboard him with household cleaner until he chokes on it approach. That seems way worse than a little pokey stabby. Then she leaves the lockable room because that little cut on her skin has suddenly started pouring blood. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe fighting that guy tore it open. She climbs another set of stairs in this infinity building and finds an entirely empty staff wing where she uses hydrogen peroxide to clean her stomach wound before she glues it shut and tapes napkins to it as a makeshift bandage. <laughs> Yeah, medical grade glue can be great for shallow cuts, not this gaping abdominal wound. But putting paper and then taping it down is just gonna wipe it right off. Oh, and don't use hydrogen peroxide. It's actually bad for healing, especially if it's not medical grade. Medical grade hydrogen peroxide has a concentration of only 3%, while food and other grade solutions can go as high as 35%, which can be fatal if it touches the skin. She hears the intruders coming and hides under a tape Table, leaving her only weapon behind again. Also, they don't see her again because they don't look down. They check adjacent rooms and the one with the keys to the whole building, just dangling outside of his pants for no reason, gets close enough for her to almost grab them. Dude, do all your guys have like nerve damage or something? If I can feel a tick touching my arm hair, you'd bet I'd feel some girl trying to rustle my jimmies like this. Maybe those masks are cutting off circulation or something cause like, after they go, she enters another lockable room that she doesn't lock and picks up another weapon that she's definitely going to lose again in like two scenes. She lazily evades capture and grabs a spool of wire, which she uses to set a trap in a nearby storage room. <laughs> Great. One down, who knows how many to go. What do you say we cut the rest of this short and rig a trap in one of the offices for all of them? Then we can call out over the loudspeaker and let them descend into a hell of our own making. It'd be very easy to do using the common cleaners Karen's job has provided for her. The YouTube overlords won't allow me to tell you how, but she has all she needs to make toxic gas and a fatal form of you know what. And I'd bet she has stuff to make more potent forms of gas too. All we'd have to do is pour two chemicals into a bucket and lock the men in a small space with it. Once the men couldn't escape, it'd be lights out or at the very least, severe organ damage between exposure and the time it took the cops to come. To prevent any of them from escaping, we just need to take one of the many pieces of wood or pallets lying around here and wedge it under the door handle once the men walk inside. Karen steals the keys from her fresh kill, then puts on his clothes and mask. Kudos for being being adventurous, but there's no way they're gonna buy that their six foot tall friend just lost like a foot in height and grew boobs. And I'm right, the disguise gets her to the door, but another intruder suspects her immediately. For the drama, he lets her actually unlock and open the door before attacking. The fight, which starts out super silly, <laughs> it's kind of bad. <laughs> Well, someone paid attention in high school physics. Suddenly, the body's phone rings with a call from her ex, Danny. She seems genuinely surprised to see the name. Was that not super obvious? Not to be a dick, but why would anyone go through all this trouble over you? I mean, none of this was necessary anyway. These idiots could have just laid in wait by your car and snatched you leaving for the night. But you have no money. You don't have a high powered position. Of course it's personal. An intruder calls her name and beckons her to him. And again, she leaves behind the phone and the bowie knife within reach. She darts back inside, 
locking him out and racing to another exit, which she gets open just for him to grab her and shove her back inside. Instead of this, you could have locked him out and dialed 911, then found a lockable room and waited there for the police to arrive. This is your abusive ex. No one's gonna think less of you for not fighting him, and all that matters is keeping him from your kid anyway, which you can't do if he kills you. It takes Danny all of 30 seconds to beat the living sh out of her. Bet that knife would have been pretty useful right about now. He breaks her face in both of her hands, then goes for the kill. When they're interrupted by their kid who wanders in out of nowhere, apparently he stole her earlier and she just happened to navigate this giant maze of a building with almost every exterior door locked in time to find them. Right. The distraction saves Karen's life. So, whatever. Yay for ridiculous plot convenience. She goes to the cleaning closet and grabs a bunch of chemicals, then uses electric equipment as the sound trail to lure him right to her, where she's waiting with a chemical trap. <laughs> He stops fighting after only a few seconds, once the vapors have begun to corrode his lungs. Then Karen does something incomprehensibly stupid. She wraps her shirt over her face, tapes a hammer to her broken hand, and opens the door. Immediately, there's a huge problem. His body isn't laying limply at her feet. Close the door again, idiot. There's nowhere for him to go. Let the poison do its work. Instead, he barrels past her in search of fresh air, and she buries the claw hammer into his head, which stops him for about two seconds before he backhands her to the ground and runs away. She chases and... <laughs> And it only gets dumber, which I didn't think was possible. She reaches blindly across a nearby surface and locks into a box cutter, but it takes her 10 entire seconds to use it to slice open the f plastic, currently killing her. Dumb. Then it takes her another 10 seconds fighting with the plastic bag, giving him time to slam her head into an industrial slip roll. Dumber. Look, I understand it's hard to think fast in situations like this, but you're already in this situation. Once there's a slit in the plastic, use that 10 seconds to shove backward against the tension, knocking him off balance, then turn and stab him in the throat. He grabs her again, choking her, but this time she has a handle. She yanks the hammer out of his head, knocking the fight out of him. Honestly, I never thought I'd be so happy to see someone finally bludgeon someone to death with a hammer. <laughs> No, but seriously, take that hammer with you. This walking, flesh-eating bacteria might have more buddies. In the end, Karen and her kids survive the coming dawn. Remember, in any scenario like this, there's no blue ribbon for dragging things out longer than you have to. Hide first, devise a plan, and execute. One-off kills are fine, if that's all you can do without risking them ganging up on you. But if you have the chemicals, which Karen does, rig a group trap in a room that you can barricade, lure them in, and take them out together all at once so that you don't lose from sheer exhaustion. There were plenty of places Karen could have hidden. There were an extreme number of weapons available to her, and she never even made it to the upstairs offices where there was definitely windows she could have escaped through using rope or that spool of wire. And ultimately, Danny went so convoluted with his revenge plan, he got all of his friends and himself killed. He could have just ambushed her in her car, and none of this would have happened. For those reasons, I think hunt her, kill her, was beaten. And remember, may all who play stupid games win stupid prizes.